Or you can say, well, this, this is a logical response. And you don't get upset about that and you say, how can we put better community education out there? And then to really make it modern, you're showing a helicopter to take the crew to and from their shore quarters. Well, I'd like to ask you one thing now, Howard. How is this going to increase our available supply of petroleum? Well, we are sure that it will, Earl, because we know there's a lot of oil offshore. But it, uh, it's going to come a little bit hard. As I mentioned, it's expensive to do this. We don't know how much oil we can find, but I'm sure we'll find quite a little bit. But I think the combination of things like this, exploration in new places around the world, improved scientific tools for finding oil, better recovery methods, all of these things are going to combine to ensure that we have a good backlog of oil for a great many years. And so don't worry about this 15-year period, Earl. We're going to be using a lot more oil by then, but I'm sure this oil industry of ours is going to be able to keep pace with it and keep a good reserve. Well, that certainly is a very, very reassuring note. And Mr. Howard Vesper, I want to thank you for coming to Science in Action to tell us about the problems in the oil field. Thank you, Earl. I've enjoyed it. Now, I'll be back in just a moment with the Animal of the Week. Here in the North Carolina mountains, in western North Carolina, we have some of the best wind resources in the nation. Uh, wind is classified from like a class one up to a class seven. And generally speaking, you're going to need a class three or four or better to really make some of these big investments possible. Here in western North Carolina, we have class five, six, seven winds. So we put these wind generators on towers, and the generator is connected to the rotor, and the rotor is, is blades, our blades. Now most people know what generators are. If the power's out, they fire up the, their fossil fuel generator. Uh, this particular one, instead of being powered by a fossil fuel engine, is powered by the rotor, which is driven by the wind. So when the wind blows, it creates electricity. When the wind doesn't blow, it doesn't create electricity. So uh, that's not, we don't call that unreliable because we know it's going to blow so many hours in a year with pretty good accuracy. We, we call that undispatchable. You can't turn the wind on. You can't turn the wind off. If it's a nice windy day, you may be at work. Your house is not using a lot of power. That energy is going to be fed back through the meter and shared with your community. And oftentimes you're receiving a, a revenue for that green power because people are buying green power. They're paying more for that clean energy that's coming onto the grid. My job is painting, keeping the outside of all these pipes and columns in good shape. I used to live here before the refinery was built. Hunted rabbits in the brush where those alkylation units are now. There wasn't much doing over in town then. A lot of folks were even fixing to move out. But then the company moved in and set up this refinery. That gave new life to the town, new jobs. It meant a lot. Now almost every family has someone in the oil business. If you announce a project and you don't th go through a lot of steps to educate the community, to make the community involved. Uh, these projects work a lot better when they have bottom-up support. How can we look for hybrid models where these wind farms can be owned by the community or community resources? And it's under those circumstances where we have found support to be best, not only before the project, but both during and after. A lot of renewable energies aren't adopted because they need subsidies, just like gasoline and petroleum is subsidized and highways are subsidized. We need subsidies for green energy too, and we're just not seeing a lot of those from the federal government yet. We've developed great partners with the manufacturers of the equipment, and so they are able to loan us equipment and they, we test it and do research and demonstrate it and hold workshops for them, so that's a great relationship. But we still need some more funding and support for operating this facility. Actually, North Carolina doesn't have many subsidies for renewable energy. And I think they could do a better job having incentives for people to put up their own wind farms. 
So people want to reduce their carbon footprint, well they can just be more efficient for one and uh, they can also produce their own power. And so they don't need to disconnect from the grid, they can just feed this grid tied system in and it, and it functions with the grid. As far as wind energy, the, the federal government, um, and straight from George Bush's mouth, is pushing for 20% of our electricity to come from wind. It's midnight again. Tuesday has waned and is gone. The pump does not know when midnight comes. Days are the same to it. It pumps from Tuesday into Wednesday without a halt. Each day, every day, it brings us another 24 hours of progress. Building our nation, guarding its security, assuring the future of America. stage our government has a real opportunity and I think a real responsibility to really promote some of these new methods of making power. Not just with the wind generators on our ridges and in our coast and the clean energy that they will provide but the jobs. Wind is just a small fraction of the big picture. It's gonna have to be a coalescence of all of these types of renewable energies. I see the, the public awareness really increasing. Things are in desperate need of change. The potential in this area is tremendous, and there's just really not a good reason why they're not being implemented. Our animal of the week is the kinkajou, and one of the nicest and one of the most strangest animals we've had on the program. He's uh, very much interested in uh, his name sign here. He's a special pet of Don McNeely. Now, Don, uh, this is an animal that comes out only at night. Is that right? Life is easier for the farm wife, too. For one thing, her wood pile is a thing of the past. To do her cooking and heating today, she can have liquefied petroleum gas delivered to the house by a local dealer. The scientists claim that Oil production was killing off baby to extract baby oil and the hundreds of other useful products. The oil companies didn't agree. 